We are heading into Wilmington. It's Saturday, July something other. And we're going to install a Goodman Dry Charge Straight Air Unit at a apartment building, condo, whatever you want to call it. So stay tuned for more HVAC fun in the heat. Here is our Good Manatrol unit. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's Goodman, the Mana and Manatrol combined. Uh, all to form the perfect brand of Good Manatrol. Um, hooking it up here to our copper. Gotta fit it up. Got a swager. Got the benders getting ready to fit it up and we'll see what that looks like. I love these things. Ratcheting tubing bender. Get a nice 90 degree there. I can fit it up and get it right to the unit. It's perfection. Next we gotta prepare the joint and the copper. You don't really need flux for this, but you want it to be clean. So, clean this off with emery cloth, and then we'll get to uh, fitting her up. Alright, we are all fit up here and ready to bray, so I'm going to hook up the nitrogen and start welding. Uh, just a side note, let move the fan. There's an old fetters unit right here. It's not that old. Uh, I think it's a Nordine built fetters. And uh, Tony, me and you were talking about what causes some of these odd head pressures and things like that. You know, you feel the discharge of the fan up here, and you got hardly anything. You got somewhere around the rim of the fan, but nothing going straight up in the air, which kind of indicates that the blade is either positioned wrong or it's out of balance. And you can put your hand on the side of the condenser, and it is just steaming hot. Uh, it's not exhausting uh, the heat off that refrigerant and condensing it. I'd be real interested to see what the pressures were in this unit. Uh, but it, she is burning hot. In fact, air, some of it is actually coming through the top rim of the condenser right now, through here. Sucking air into the bottom, cool down here, blowing air out through the top of the condenser. So this one is definitely not performing correctly. Uh, but, you know, I know what's going to be done about it. No. Okay, got the flow meter hooked up. Gonna take it up to about 5 psi. It'll displace all the other uh, gases in the line and cause uh, there to be no scale buildup whenever I braze. That's the idea. Uh, so I'm gonna turn it up, and I'll turn it up to around 5 there, a little bit higher, and uh, I'll just leave it and I'll let it run for a couple uh, about a minute after I get done brazing too, just to make sure. There's our regulator. And let's get to brazing. All right, we're waiting for my lines to cool off here. And it's a straight cool unit, so there's uh, no defrost controller. As you see, it would be up here, but it's not there. Uh, two wire coming in, and the only thing those two low voltage wires are doing is putting power to the coil and the contactor. Uh, once there's power to the contactor, high voltage. And this call for compressor and common energize that coil. Power then flows to the outdoor fan motor and compressor and the capacitor here. And the capacitor, what it does is on a single phase motor, uh, it gives a artificial secondary phase which starts those motors to turning. Also keeps them turning efficiently. Uh, so that is the purpose of the capacitor. That's why when your capacitor goes bad, it looks like a locked rotor because there's no way for that single phase motor to start unless it has that secondary phase of power to put it into motion. That's why when you spin it with a screwdriver, the outdoor fan takes off because uh, you're sort of being that secondary phase. But, so we're about to wire the high voltage, uh, put a nitrogen test on it, and then pull in a vacuum and weigh the charge in. Sounds easy. Okay, we're pulling a vacuum old school style because uh, one of my valve core removers fell in the dag on dirt, which pisses me off. But, uh, so I'm just gonna hook up. Uh, it's only a ton and a half system anyway. Okay, while I'm pulling a vacuum, I'm going to take a look at this fetters unit. We're going to do a little compare and contrast. See, not much air coming out the top. A little bit out the side. Some getting slung out the side here. So let's see what the different temperatures are uh, across the condenser. Just for kicks. At the bottom, 94. Let's try the middle. Oops, let's try the middle. 99 across the middle. Let's try the top right. 
quite a bit different. It shows us having 114 degrees across the top row of the condenser. That is quite a difference in the air is actually coming out through here. Yeah, so I asked the guy, if he came outside, he said it was still cooling. But uh, it sure could be cooling better. Huh? I was going to mention too that I, I bought this hand truck or uh, hand cart from Harbor Freight. And I put that two ton high oil package unit on it and it worked like a charm. I don't know if it'll work like a charm for the five ton, but uh, it's supposed to hold a thousand pounds. I don't know about that, but uh, it held about 350 uh, with ease. And we trucked the old unit up and the new unit up here, so it, was, it worked great. Uh, so I definitely endorse those for moving units around. I'm going to move my tools around instead of having to lug everything. Because I am too old for that shit. All right, we're weighing in the charge now, about four pounds. It's only ten and a half. And then we will start her up and then fine tune everything and make sure we're good to go. All right, we're taking our web bolt from inside the return duct. The unit's right up here in the wall. Web bolt temperature of 72.7. Coming down a little bit. I'm going back up now. Alright. Alright guys, sorry I got cut off there. Uh, if you would have been there, you would have seen that the outdoor temperature was just over 90. Uh, dry ball by the condenser and our superheat was around 20. We ended up with a superheat in the high teens and uh, call it a day there. My sister actually showed up and I was talking to her. So, sorry about that. We actually got an emergency call while I was there that a blower is blowing hot air but the condenser is not coming on and this sounds like it's going to be another capacitor but it's about 45 miles from here so I'm going to drive up there and see what we can do and then call it a day and I'll probably end up going sizzler <laughs>